Encabezado por la Unión Soviética. My name is Sylvia Salisbury and next week I'll be 85 years old and I've had a long odd association with the Communist Party, not always as a member, but associated with, through families and friends. My father was a member of the Communist Party. And as a child, I grew up during the about five or six until I was 12, during the Second World War. And there was not at that time an anti-Communist Party flavour around because they were fighting the fascists, the, the Soviets were fighting the fascists on the same side as us. So there was quite a friendly attitude by people who didn't know a great deal about the Soviet Union, but they knew they were on our side. And so I grew up in Lakemba and there were Communist Party meetings. There were four houses in a very short space of space of four houses being all members of the Communist Party. Uh, at Punch Bowl, there was one street, that uh, Victoria Street, I think it was called, where there were so many members of the Communist Party, they used to refer to it as Red Square. And when they had a barbecue on, raising money to send stuff to the soldiers, um, it was supported by everyone in the, in the district so I grew up with the fact that there were communists around. Um, there, were part, there were films being shown by the Communist Party in Lakemba um, that were like Battle for Stalingrad, Battle for Leningrad, and people just went because we were seeing war films all around in the newsreels. They didn't have television. They didn't have television. So, but in always in newsreels in the city, in, in Sydney, you used to have a place that did nothing but newsreels. And you just went in, sat through as many as you liked and walked out. And that was the equivalent of what we now see on television. At that time, my father also took me to, when I was 12, to New Theatre, which was a left-wing theatre producing plays that always had a social justice content in their plays and they also did political reviews and I just loved it. I just loved this uh, theatre and it was actually run by mostly members of the Communist Party. That was part of their work to introduce to people questions on social justice. Um, I then joined the theatre as soon as I left school and performed in plays and always had social justice questions around. Then later on when I married and had, I married a member of the Communist Party and when we had children, they then joined the Young Socialist Movement. I still didn't, didn't think of joining the party myself because I was much more interested in the cultural side of life and was very interested that the Communist Party itself encouraged working class people to express themselves. I don't think I ever had a first impression. It was always around being there as a child. So I never had to think about, oh, this is something different. I didn't know that. They were there. Uh, they were working class and they were cultural. And that mixture I found very attractive. And then later when my children joined the Socialist Party, I was helping them have meetings at our place and putting on cups of tea and that. And Mary Wright, a very old member of the party, the wife of Tommy, uh, Tommy Wright, uh, who was, I think, um, the building carpenter, it was in their building union. Um, his wife said to me, why don't you join? And she was a real battler to getting people to join. And I said, I, I don't know what I could do. I, I'm interested in the theatre and um, interested in working class people having uh, the, the access to expressing 
things, but no, not actually, but she kept on persisting. You can do something. And so I joined just as a, in the local branch, whatever they were going to do. I never had the feeling that I was going to be a political theorist or, or to climb up high. I had no ambitions to climb up the, the ladder of, you know, getting positions in the party. I just was happy to work with the people. Whatever work that was needed, I was happy to do. I was against the Vietnam War and our, our young men, particularly the young men who did not have the vote, being conscripted to go just on the draw of a lottery, you know, their number. And I thought that was so unfair that they didn't have the vote to decide on the government, but they had to go and fight. So I got involved with that and used my singing for the Save the Sons movement a lot. And then I was interested in the revival of uh, a, an Australian uh, revival in the 1960s of Australian folk songs, um, songs of what the working men in Australia sang. Yeah. Um, so the cultural side and the fact that the Communist Party supported this cultural thing among workers was to me a very, very attractive. Well, I suppose it's to be always helping improve conditions for people, improve conditions for families. The, tech, the campaigns are different now because technology has changed over those 85 of my 85 years. So young people have got a totally different way of communicating with each other and communicating what they feel should be changed in society. So I'm a little bit out of it now. Being so much older, I still tend to do things the old fashioned way. Actually, if I stop and think, one of the most exciting things was that after the war, when there was this sort of, you know, tolerance, say, to communists, uh, and then it started to change and you started to get a lot of anti-communist um, articles in the main press, and there was this sort of, oh, you know, there's something. And then suddenly, in the 1960s, this Sputnik went up. And the ABC were playing and breaking programs every five minutes to say the Soviet Union has launched a Sputnik. And it was completely um, unknown to us in the West that they were that advanced, that they could actually get uh, a controlled Sputnik around the world. And all the time on the radio, they kept stopping. It was such a, a big surprise. And to a communist, it was, um, it, it reinforced the fact that we knew they were doing things uh, well and technically well but that we weren't hearing about it and that to me was even more um, exciting than say this landing of the man um, the Americans on the moon. I suppose I'd really like them to know that they are ordinary people like themselves with a strong desire for a good life for people, for a, not a not a exciting life, not a not a wealthy life, not those things, but that the basic things that we need a roof over our heads to be have time to relax and enjoy our children and watch them grow up, for to know that there's a health care there when when it's needed, to and that people are fighting for these things and they're not you know, going around as the old saying, you know, with a bomb in their pocket to, you know, ruin the country and pull the government down. They want it to grow and they want life to be good for people, wholesome and good. And I just found working with them and being with communists very satisfying. And, and I know there's a lot of problems and I know that people make mistakes or don't live up to the ideals. But that's life, that's life. It's just part of the tapestry of life. Well, actually, the actual moment of joining was Mary Wright because she just kept on insisting. She was a very insistent person and I really didn't know what I was letting myself in. The other thing was probably my husband who, who had a very almost idealistic view of communists. Um, but a hard worker and he knew that 
life was always going to be a struggle. He had a more positive attitude. And I suppose in a way, my husband and the people in New Theatre. Oh, I'd say that is because things are getting very tough for people. In, in Australia after the war, when it was easy to get a job, um, you know, there wasn't, quite, after a while, there wasn't that sort of need to struggle because things were getting easy. But now uh, I really feel for young people because it's hard for them to get an apprenticeship. Um, the, the selling off of things that were done by the government into private enterprise. If it's privatised, we can't vote on the board of a director. But if it's done by the government, we can vote a government out. We can have a say. And I think now things are getting so hard for people and there's a lack of, there's a lack of joy and everything. And I think they are now looking for an answer before it never came into their head that there was another way of doing things. But slowly people are starting to see there must be another way. And with the advent of Corbyn and Sanders, the word socialism is starting to have not the horror that you know everyone had. Like there must be something in it, and I'm 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 really hopeful that young people with their new technology, their more open way of looking at things, that they will eventually see yes, things have got to change, and they have to be part of the change. <laughs>